Gears. Aims. Be able to explain how gears transmit the rotational effects of forces. Gears are used in lots of different machines, including motorbikes and cars. The reason for this is because gears can transmit or pass on a rotational effect or turn an effect of a force from one gear to another. Let's consider how gears do that. You can see from this animation that as the big gear turns, it makes the small gear turn. Let's see in this example that the large gear is connected to the engine and the small gear is connected to the wheels. The engine is supplying a force to gear 1, called the driver gear, which makes it turn, anti-clockwise. The driver gear transmits the same size force onto gear 2, called the driven gear but it makes it rotate in the opposite direction, clockwise in this example. The driven gear is connected to the wheels, so the car starts to move. How fast the car moves depends on the rotation of the gears, which depends in part on the ratio of the number of teeth on the two gears. Let me show you how to calculate the number of rotations using the number of teeth. Let's consider the following gear setup. Gear 1 has twice as many teeth as gear 2, so gear 2 will rotate two times for every one rotation of gear 1. This gear setup is called a speed multiplier. Because the driven gear goes faster than the driver gear. If you were on a mountain bike, this would be a high gear, like 15th gear. The gears rotate tooth for tooth. Let's look at another setup. In this animation, the driven gear would complete a quarter of a rotation for every one full rotation of the driver gear. If you were on a mountain bike, this would be a low gear, like first gear. You would be pedalling very fast, but your back wheel wouldn't be turning very fast. Look closely at the animation. The ratio of teeth of the driver to the driven gear is 10 to 40. That can be simplified as a ratio to 1 to 4. This gear setup is called a torque multiplier because the driver gear is smaller than the driven gear and it creates a larger moment on the driven gear. This is good if you want to move a heavy load because it gives a greater turning effect or moment. I'll show you how to work out the moment. It's important to understand that a moment or turn and effect does not just depend on a force, it also depends on the perpendicular distance that the force is being applied from the pivot. The pivot is the point around which the gear rotates. It's always in the middle of the gear. The moment equals the force times by the perpendicular distance of the force from the pivot. The moment of the driver gear equals force times by perpendicular distance from the force to the pivot equals 200 newtons times by 0.1 meters equals 20 newton meters. The moment of the driven gear equals 200 newtons times by 0.4 meters equals 80 newton meters. The turn and effect of the driven gear is four times as big as the turn and effect of the driver gear because the radius of the driven gear is four times as big. Here's some questions. Give them a whirl. Pause the video. And here's the answers. The moment equals the force times by the perpendicular distance equals 100 newtons times by 0.4 meters equals 40 newton meters. The moment equals the force times by perpendicular distance equals 100 newtons times by 0.2 meters equals 20 newton meters. Here's some questions for you to try to make sure you understand. Gear A has 10 teeth 
Gear B has 30 teeth, and they are connected together. How many times will Gear B rotate for each rotation of Gear A? How many times will Gear A rotate for each rotation of Gear B? And here's the answers. Gear B will make one third of a rotation for each full rotation of gear A. Gear A will make three full rotations for each full rotation of gear B. Here's some challenge questions. Pause the video and give them a try. And here's the answers. So the moment is the force times by perpendicular distance. So F equals M divided by D, if we rearrange the equation. And that's 20 Newton meters divided by 0.1 meters equals 200 Newtons. Now, the force on the driven gear is always equal to the force on the driver gear. So the moment equals the force times by perpendicular distance. It's gonna be the same 200 Newtons of force but this time it's going to be acting 0.2 meters from the pivot so it's going to give a moment of 40 newton meters so the moment is twice as big on the driven gear compared to the driver gear there'll be lots more 3d animations coming up in future videos thank you very much work hard and be nice want to see more videos like this subscribe to my channel GCSE Physics Explained. Bye for now.